Hello everyone, I'm Hayden from 7 Apertures Photography, and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, name change, um, as per my Instagram username. But uh, today I'll be doing an editing breakdown on this shot, uh, thanks to my friend uh, Jacob from Vancouver for lending me the shot to edit. It's an amazing shot right here, taken on the Canon R5, with the 70-200 at ISO 5000, f2.8, and 1 60th of a second. As you can see, it's incredibly sharp. So, without further ado, I'm going to get started here. So, I started off with just ever so slightly bringing up the exposure. And one of the things that I found a bit more annoying with this shot was the fact that the uh, wings were kind of green on the bottom. So, I just used the auto white balance selector and clicked on that, and it already looks great. Now, I'm going to get to the cropping. So, I, liked it. I went for a one-on-one -on -one aspect ratio on this because it looks really good, and then I kind of went for a dramatic sort of angle, kind of like, a bit like that. And then just kind of cropped in a bit more tightly on the engines. This might, this is not an exact replica of the uh, edit that I have on the shot, but it's close enough, or will be close enough. So I started off with that, and then one of the most critical steps when you're in the initial camera raw filter is lens corrections, which I've already done. I'm going to denoise this photo, so I'm just going to speed this process up real quick. I would recommend setting it up to around, depends on the shot, but in this case, 50, eh, 60 will do. As you can see here in the preview. It gets rid of a decent amount of the noise and should be good enough for editing later on. So I'm just going to speed this up real quick. Okay, so now that the denoise process has been completed, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to work on removing the lens flares just a little bit right now. Uh, but before that, I'm just going to continue with the basic ad adjustments a little bit. As uh, demonstrated in my previous editing tutorial, clarity helps a lot with editing night shots, so I'm going to put that up to about 30, and the dehaze goes up as well. Kind of around that. What I'm going to do next is, this is the first step of, uh, actually no, but you can see that there are some extra lens flares apart from that big one right next to the engine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the healing tool and clone this out. Okay, so now that I've removed most of the lens flares, uh, I'm going to remove the ones in the top of the photo later on. I'm going to fix up the tone curve real quick, so I'm going to bring up the lights, bring down the darks, and bring up the shadows. You can see already here how we've made quite a bit of progress on this. What I'm going to do next is going to go over to the, the color calibration section, drag the blue primary hue to the left, and as you can see, this is overboard, so I'm not going to go too far, kind of around 40. It's kind of the point where the landing lights look crystal clear and a really beautiful sort of blue. I'm also going to fix up the red primary hue a little bit and drag it to the left, because the beacons look a tiny bit orange at the moment. So obviously, not going to go too overboard on this like no more than 10. Now I'm going to open the shot up in Photoshop. This is where things get rather interesting in regards to removing the lens flares because this is a... Uh, if you've already updated to Photoshop 2024, you will have generative fill built in and you won't need to use Photoshop beta. Uh, so I suggest that you download that, that update. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do this 
So I'm going to select most of the lens flare, but not the bit that's on the engine. So... Just gonna select this all. Now, this is... Actually, I do recall selecting the lens flare when I actually edited this shot. Now, this is interesting because the prompt that you type in, if you just simply type in remove lens flare, it does an absolutely atrocious job of getting rid of this really annoying lens flare. But if you put remove lens flares with an S instead, it does a surprisingly much better job with removing the lens flare. Now, this isn't perfectly uh, easy to tell at the moment, but you can see how it did kind of a terrible job uh, getting rid of this lens flare, and that's fine because we're going to fix that momentarily. So I'm going to just square over this again. Don't really need it to be neat, but what I'm going to do anyways is I'm just going to subtract it anyways. I'm just kind of... Yes, I know I should be using the lasso for this, but it's extremely annoying to use, and often if you have sensitive hands, it kind of moves around a bit, so it's not exactly the easiest thing to do, which is why I prefer not using it, and I just prefer using this. So I'll just speed this up. Now as you can see here, this one, this one actually did a much better job of removing the lens flare. And there's actually not even really all that much that's visible now in terms of artifacts that Generative Fill has left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the layer panel and flatten the image. Now, we're going to open up the camera raw filter again. And things get kind of fun here. So you can see how there's kind of a visible line that this terrible job that Generative Fill has done. What I'm going to do instead is just a light feathered healing brush and just kind of go over it. Don't go on the engine in this case, but you can see that's done a fantastic job removing most of the, uh, I guess you could say artifacts that this generative fill has created. Also going to fix this, because that should not be orange under any circumstance. All right, that's gone. Now we're going to go over to this side, and this still has definitely left some visible edges to this. This is the issue with Generative Fill, is since it's still in development, uh, it will often leave like some residue and stuff, uh, very visible edges uh, to removed parts. Like you can see here, how it kind of still has these for some reason, which is why I'm going to clone them out real quick, or at least heal them, same thing. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to remove the other lens flares that I didn't do yet. Just because when you do it all in one camera raw filter, it's actually a lot more chaotic, typically. Alright, that's done. So, it's not fully done, actually, because there's still slightly visible lens flare left here. Okay, that's gone. So, this is how I achieved the spaceship effect. Uh, many of you have probably seen this in my posts already, and uh, I haven't really made a tutorial on this effect yet until now. But what you do is you take a radial gradient like this, and you take it out in the direction that the landing light goes and extend it quite far. Make sure the feather is almost maxed, and just have a fairly feathered brush, and just select, remove the selection that's on the aircraft itself, and make sure that the center of this is right on the center of the landing light. I'm going to add another radial gradient. Rather than adding it, I'm actually just going to duplicate this and put this over here. Just like that. And then I'm going to simply remove all these selections with the brush. Okay, so I'm not fully done with the spaceship, the, uh, spaceship effect yet, but this is just part of the uh, thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the exposure of this, as you can see here, and I might as well extend the gradients a little bit. And as you can see, if you try this, this is 
possibly one of the most satisfying things you can do in a night edit. Adding that sort of spaceship effect to the landing lights. It will cause a lot of highlight clipping, but that doesn't matter really. That is very common with night shots. The histogram on night shots is typically awful, and there's not much you can do about it. Now we're going to do a one for the central landing light, and from this angle, this is where it gets a little bit more difficult for the spaceship effect. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a radial gradient, subtract a linear gradient from this, and just kind of drag it up, because that way I don't have to mask around the aircraft. And just increase the exposure, not too much, and there. Add a little bit of contrast to compensate. Gonna increase the exposure again. Contrast up, highlights down, shadows down. Not too much. Now you can see the image is nice and sharp, very clear, and the plane is decently bright. I'm gonna bring up the whites a tiny bit to kind of brighten out the lights a little bit. You can see that this has definitely made quite a difference here. So I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna finish up with some final edits, uh, final touches basically. Don't do this typically, but I only like to do this in this sort of case. Uh, bring down the vignetting, because it adds, it, it darkens the night sky a little bit and it looks good. This is the only scenario where artificial vignetting will actually look decent. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna desaturate the blues ever so slightly. Drag the blue hue ever so slightly to the left as well. And, as well, if you want to brighten up the beacon a little bit, what you do is take a radial gradient over here. I learned this technique from uh, Daniel. Please go check it out. His editing tutorials as well because he covers this very well. You can see that's already made uh, a decent difference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the color calibration and just bring up the saturation of the blues, but not too much and not too little. Now I'm going to click OK. Now, this is the final section of this, and this is the quickest step. If you don't have this, this is not necessary, but I recommend you get this. It's I got this for $80, I believe, and I've used it ever since. Uh, don't use Topaz Denoise. Uh, it's personally useless, in my opinion, now that the camera raw denoise exists. But you can see how I have this set, set to motion blur very blurry, and it actually makes quite a difference here with the sharpness on the aircraft, because due to the motion blur, uh, and just the angle that this is shot at, only really the center of the aircraft is perfectly sharp, and the nose, as you, as you can see, is kind of where the sharpness just dies. And so that sharpen also gets rid of most of the noise too, which is helpful. But, because of this, it looks a bit kind of fake, in a sense. So what I'm going to do to compensate for this is once this finishes processing, hopefully it doesn't crash like Topaz sometimes does. Okay, sweet, it worked. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the camera raw filter, and I'm going to go to the effects section, and I'm going to add a little bit of grain. Artificial grain makes the photo look a tiny bit better, especially night ones. See how that's made actually quite a bit of a difference, making the photo look a little bit more real. And now we're going to click OK, and we're basically done with this. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is my first time uh, on the night tutorial, so, well, not necessarily, but this is my first time on the spaceship effect. Uh, please let me know if I have any improvements to make, and yeah, thank you. Hayden from 7 Apertures, out.